In today's video, I'm going to show you footage from a recent reptile expo that I went to. This was filmed at the end of September. I'm just kind of late getting around to editing and putting up the video because I've been working on so many projects and videos lately. But here it is. We went to the expo. It was called Repticon. It was in Timonium, Maryland. But I just wanted to put a quick disclaimer on for anyone that is not familiar with reptile expos. You're going to see a lot of reptiles in deli cups and small containers. This is not a permanent enclosure. This is not how the animals live. It's not how they're kept. They're literally just in these for the shows or for transportation purposes. It's really no different than when you have to temporarily put your dog in a crate or your horse in a stall. So this is for display purposes for the show only. I can assure you that these keepers are really passionate about their animals. They really love them and they're not going to mistreat them because if they did, they wouldn't be able to have a business out of them. If they were mistreating their animals, they wouldn't be healthy enough to reproduce and breed and sell. And in addition to that, there were also some people going around the show and inspecting all the tables and all the animals to make sure that everyone was doing this in an ethical manner. And I could tell that those officials were taking their job very seriously. So yeah, we'll get to the footage now. I just wanted to put that out there for anyone that's not familiar with this. Don't worry, these animals are only in this for the sale. They're going to go back home to nice, real enclosures. And while we were at the expo, we also had a breeder that was kind enough to talk to us about the animals that he breeds, and he tells us a little bit about how he personally takes care of his animals. And we're going to see a lot of cool stuff while we're there, as well as some art and some plants and just a ton of different animal species. I'll also show you some of the different things that I picked up from my enclosures. Frog and I already said this one's my favorite one out of the bunch. Yep, right some here. of them's got scars, some of them are darker. I mean, yeah, if, you go, if you go on YouTube, mm -hmm. you can sit there, you can sit there and watch the guy hand carve them and mass all the Doesn't really. Okay. So they look awesome. It's just a bunch of there's a bunch of people, just local people, mm -hmm. that sit there on the on the sidewalk and they just hand carve them and stuff. That's so cool. I wish I was that talented. They have a local, <laughs> it's made out of the
I've never. Have you ever seen one like this? It's I think they really want. Rex.com. Full geckos, captive bred toke geckos, giant geckos. Uh, the New Caledonia geckos are particularly nice because they don't need any special heat. They like room temperature. They don't need any special light. They're nocturnal. They don't need any special humidity as long as you mist them every couple of, well, every day is best. Uh, and they don't need to eat insects. No live insects. You can feed them insects if you like because it's a lot of fun watching them. Eat them. But uh, the commercial foods that are available retail, they're all equally nutritious and they're very robust. Uh, most reptiles, well, all reptiles, if you want to get the right heat, the right lighting, the right size cage, the right food, and the right uh, type of light. Well, same thing with New Caledonia geckos. Crested gargoyles and giant geckos treat them all the same. But their temperature, they like our temperature. They like room temperature. You should get one. They're really easy to take care of. I breed crested geckos. Yeah, I don't have a lychee, though. <laughs> yeah. It's so very cute. It I is keep adorable. It exactly the same. So everybody says lychees are the expert geckos. Start with crested first before you get a well, So that's code for expensive. That's what expert is. Any animal in this show is simple to keep. As long, but it might cost a lot more to get it set up. You're going to need a bigger cage for a lychee as an adult than you would for a crusty. Uh, 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 Harbor's got some chameleons over there. You know, chameleons, oh, very sensitive. Well, as long as you, you get the right cage. I mean, so there's cloud force chameleons. I don't have any. But you got to have the, like, the rolling mist from where they're from, right? And it's got to be hot. And it's got to have a lot of uh, air movement. Well, if you can do all that... You probably paid a lot of money to do it, but if you can do it, everything's fine. They're not sensitive species as long as you set them up for appropriately. Back in 92, you know, uh, after I graduated, I was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And for years, I wanted to be as complicated as possible. And if I can make it work, I'm the man. <laughs> but what I discovered is, well, I'm fascinated by reptiles. and. I can satisfy that fascination with these New Caledonia geckos. See, I'm old enough to remember when they weren't here. Then they refound them, they found them again. I don't know if you heard the story. Yeah, in the 90s. So, yeah, so I was at the first uh, Florida show when they discovered them. And there was only one guy that had them. They had a lot of them. They were very expensive. But So, through the years, I've decided that these are the ones to keep for me. And it makes it so, like you, very accessible to new hobbyists. To, gain, to get in on this, you know, fascinating world of these reptiles. So the man will tell you from uh, Villanova University, his name's Aaron Bauer, they, they, they don't evolve very well. So instead, geckos as a group have, there's like 1,200 types of geckos. Can you believe it? Well, there was last year, maybe there's more now. Uh, they have what the man calls plasticity. So they, you know, they have a wide range that they can... They don't want to be in a, a, a you know a variable environment, but once they're in a niche, it, in one lifetime, they can you know sort of adapt to that. In fact, Aaron would say adapt's the wrong word, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So that was a relatively new concept to me, uh, because you think that these animals, everything that these animals encounter in nature, my speculation is novice. They must need it. They must have evolved to need it. Like. Uh, I don't know. They just learn to live with it. Jungle man, and they're going to eat everything they can find. Mm -hmm. There are optimally nutritious diets in captivity that are remarkably different from the wild. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You, you ever keep bearded dragons? When I was a kid, I had So one. collard greens and super worms are all they need. Really? You got leopard geckos? All they need are mealworms. What's your favorite species that you work with? Uh, uh, tokes. Toke geckos? Definitely. They've always been fascinated by tokies. So, you know, the binomial name, name of this animal is uh, what? Uh, Rachodactylus auriculox. This is uh, Rachodactylus, what? Liatianus. But this guy, the toke, this, the scientific name of this animal is Gecko Gecko. How cool is that? That's man? awesome. That's not the only family of animals that has like a type species. I think. Gorillas are called Gorilla Gorilla, for example. But uh, this is a captive hatch toke gecko from this female here. Uh, this is a wild caught female. It's the only wild caught animal on the table. Uh, I got her seven years ago, imported. Uh, that's the way you used to get them. 
Mm -hmm. uh, well, in fact, I think Toke geckos generally the only ones you're ever going to find are going to be wild caught. We're never going to decimate the population of Toke geckos. They're everywhere. Okay. They're beautiful. They're like fully adult size then. Okay. And uh, fun fact, they, uh, the, the species is female. They oh, okay. That's it. How many could you keep in a container that size? Two max? Uh, two max. Yeah. Um, they live in significant densities in the wild. It's like mm. they found 30 <laughs> in a 6 by 6 foot area. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. A three book set. Like a oh, textbook set. Ohio, Ohio, Texas. Okay.
did like the edge mm -hmm. around it. Make it I enjoy doing all this stuff. And Wood burning's even more impressive that way. Yeah. Actually, that's uh, great for Halloween right now, too. It's got um, beehive, all of its fat. Reptile expos are a great way to meet other breeders, meet new people, learn about a ton of different species, and learn how to keep them. If you're on the fence about getting a reptile or you want to get into the hobby but you're not quite sure what animal you want to get yet, it's a great way to go and see all the different options out there and talk to the breeders and learn how to take care of them first so you can decide what species you want and if it's going to fit into your lifestyle. I want to put one more disclaimer in before I end the video. It can be tempting when you're at an expo to impulse buy because there's so many cool things there. But please make sure you don't do that. Only buy a reptile once you've fully done your research and you know that it's something that you want to commit to and make sure that you have a nice enclosure already set up before you bring it home so that it can come home to a nice, comfortable, and safe environment to go into. A lot of reptiles spend their time hiding and there's a lot of nocturnal species at this expo, so they sleep during the day. So them being in those tiny temporary enclosures for the sale isn't a big deal for a short amount of time because like I said, a lot of them spend most of their day hiding in small places anyway to avoid predators like they would in the wild. But like I stressed earlier in the video, you can't keep them in those small conditions for long. So if you do buy a reptile, just make sure that it has a nice enclosure to come home to. You know the proper diet that it needs and have that ready. You have the proper supplements on hand and that you know the correct temperature, humidity, and lighting that that species requires. Owning reptiles is a great hobby to get into. And once you learn how to do it properly, it can be extremely rewarding.